looking to learn a thing or three about North Korea? Well, I've just read this book called The Cleanest Race, How North Koreans See Themselves and Why It Matters by B.R. Myers. It's the first book I've ever read on North Korea, and I've been looking to dig into the subject for a long, long time now. I've seen basically every documentary that exists on North Korea on YouTube, and this was kind of my first attempt at deep diving, and I thought it was a pretty good place to start. The book is about North Korean propaganda. Uh, B.R. Myers is a guy who lectures on international culture in Busan, South Korea, and he's been studying for the past like 20 years before he wrote this book on North Korean politics and pop culture and ideology, and he's basically collated the stuff that he's learned and realized, oh wait, the West fundamentally misunderstands South North Koreans' politics and their motivations, and until we learn what they're actually, what their goals are and what they believe, we won't be able to effectively work with them or interact with them in any meaningful way. The book starts off with a sort of rundown of Korean history, starting from like around the time that they were colonized by Japan and running up to the end of the Korean War and how North Korea formed and all that. It's very cursory, like it's very clear that it's just, the history section is just there to give you context for the propaganda. So once that gear shift happens, that's when it starts to get really interesting. You can tell Myers gets a lot more passionate. He starts talking about the ideology, and one of the main things that he does is break down traditionally held beliefs about North Korea. He says that not only are they not technically Soviet or communistic, they're also not really believers in their own ideology. Like, they have this unique ideology called Juche Thought, but Myers believes that Juche Thought and communism is all, like, a show. It's an advertisement, and it's not really believed by North Korea or its power structure. So, for the communism thing, he says it's much more fitting to compare North Korean government to the fascist regimes of Europe in World War II or the imperial Japanese regime. He says it's not really fitting to call them communists because they're not interested in things like class consciousness or seizing the means of production. They're way more focused on racial purity, on having like this big strong leader to protect the pure innocent civilians. And then when he gets around to talking about Juche Thought, he's just like, well, Juche Thought is supposed to be about like the rugged determination of the individual and things like that, but that's clearly not what North Korea is. It's about conformity above anything else. So basically these two, like the communism thing and the Juche thing, those are like storefront windows and then inside what the people who live in North Korea get, they're just hammered with this like racial purity idea, with this military first great leader, he's like your father, he's like your mother, all rolled into one, and that's sort of the takeaway of this book. So I find myself sort of ill-equipped going into this book a little bit because I only know like a little bit about North Korean ideology, so I'm not sh quite sure that I'm convinced that GK is really as empty as Meyer suggests that it is, but I definitely see his point. He uses propaganda to uh, back up his arguments. You can definitely see the motherly paternal dynamic going on when you look at the original cover of this book. I really wish that they had kept it for this edition because, you know, any dictator across history will make big huge statues of themselves, but not every leader will obsessively try to depict themselves as being motherly. And with that going against the grain, obviously, of how the West conceptualizes the Kim dynasty in North Korea, you tend to have this instinct of like, okay, how much of a grain of salt should I be taking this with? That's a fair question because a lot of the time news articles will come out about North Korea which contradict each other. They're very unreliable, so you have to be wary of how such a secret state really is because all you're getting is propaganda or hearsay, generally speaking. But what Myers does in this book, which kind of sidesteps that issue, is he only focuses on what what we know, like what North Korea has released, whether to its own public or for international consumption. He's working through archives which North Korea has available for people to come and see in South Korea. They have like this um, like 
diplomatic uh, interpretive center. Visit visitors can come in and take a look at the propaganda and read it as much as they want. And all of the assessments that Myers makes in this book are extrapolated from what he's read through North Korea's own words. It actually takes a minute to be like, okay, what do these people think? How do they believe it in themselves? How do they, what do they think about the outside world and their place in it? And that's why it's, it, it's really an interesting read. The narrow focus of the book does have its drawbacks, though. Like I said, this book is basically only about North Korean propaganda and ideology. It's not a history of the country. It's not a look at the, you know, brutal machinations of tyranny. It's just about presenting an argument and trying to convince people that we're dealing with North Korea wrong or we misunderstand it and that could have bad consequences. Um, the book is only 170 pages if you don't count the notes and bibliography. So in a lot of ways it's, it's great for like digestible information, but it lacks a lot of that context and a lot of that information that would be useful in a full-length book. Yes, it, it works well as an introduction since it focuses on North Korean belief, but it in, another, in a few other places, I felt like I needed a Wikipedia article to sort of bolster it. Like, it mentions, the book mentions the Non-Proliferation Treaty and the Sunshine Act, I think it was called, and it doesn't really talk a lot about what that meant for the global stage in terms of dealing with North Korea. It was just kind of glossed over. We got a very quick look of how North Koreans saw it. They see it as like, oh, the West is so afraid of us that they're trying to make deals now. Hmm. But you don't really see how it objectively plays out. But yeah, I still really enjoyed reading about the book. Like, I, I maybe it's because I'm an artist, maybe it's because I'm, I have a soft spot for everything kitschy, but I loved looking at North Koreans' um, visual culture and doing a deep dive and sort of analyzing it. Like, some people might be bored by the, by the deep dive that this book goes into that sort of thing, but I was just like endlessly fascinated in the cult of personality and the ideology and stuff like that. And while I wasn't completely convinced that North Korea isn't at least a distorted reflection of Soviet countries or that it doesn't quite believe in its Chubche thought. Maybe that's just because I don't have the context yet. Like, I feel like my opinion of this book uh, will fluctuate up and down as I get more information about North Korea. Um, but for now, I'm sitting at a 7 out of 10 on this one. Uh, I definitely recommend it. If you're interested in cults of personality or the aesthetics of tyranny, then it's probably right up your alley. I realize that probably not very many people have read this book, but if you did, I'd love to hear from you. Or if you've read any books on North Korea or other dictatorships that you thought were interesting, please let me know. I am looking for recommendations. And anyway, that's all for now. I have no idea when I'll be back because I may be gone for two months during an artist residency, but who knows, maybe I'll find a time to do a review while I'm gone.